Let me ask you this question. Has God ever felt distant? That's a question I think most of us, I dare say all of us have asked at one point in our lives. And that question tends to lead to another question. And that question is, does God even exist? Now the logical extent of the question of, is God even there, can lead to, does God exist? Of course, through this series of apologetics here at Union College, we're trying to answer that question, does God exist? Of course, we think he does. You know, there are many titles for God or for Christ that I've heard in my life. There are hundreds. There's a book one time I read that was a daily devotional. Each day it had like 10 titles for God and a name for God. But one of my favorite actually is The Uncaused First Cause. It's a little bit of a weird title for God, but hear me out. The word uncaused is there for a reason. And that actually is, in and of itself, that word is an argument in the title. Because one of the most common arguments you'll hear against the existence of God is who created God. So when we insert the word uncaused there, we are actually starting off the bat saying, no, our God is uncaused, nothing caused him. So when we feel whether God is distant or not, we have to answer the question, does he exist, in order to give us a better understanding. I know this helped me a lot in my journey. And sometimes I think he feels distant, not because he's distant from us, but because we're distant from him. And, and when we feel these feelings, a lot of the times it can drive us to the conclusion that God doesn't exist. But what we hope we can do here today is discover that regardless of how distant God may feel, we can know that he's there. And there are, there are three questions that I've, I've asked before in different settings when it comes to apologetics that uh, answer uh, really important questions about reality. One of them is, where did we come from? We came from somewhere, right? And that, that goes into another argument we can talk about another time, being the Kalam argument. Where did we come from? Where do good and evil come from? That, that leads into the moral argument. And what happens to us when we die? Now, what happens to us when we die, that's for another time. But today, where do good and evil, and where do we come from? Where does everything begin? Because everything has to have a beginning somewhere, right? There was, during high school, on my route to school, there was a 7-Eleven. And it was being built at the time. So I watched it go from not existing at all to slowly, layer by layer, brick by brick, be built up. Now, over time, I watched it come into existence. And then later on, on, the, on that route, I would get gas there. It became my primary gas station. Now, when I look at that 7-Eleven, I know for sure that somebody built it because I watched it be built. Doesn't matter, though, that I watched it be built. I can look at a different 7-Eleven in a different location and still know beyond a shadow of a reasonable doubt that somebody built that 7-Eleven. I don't have to see it be built in order to know that it had a creator. It's what we like to call irreducible complexity, saying that something is clearly designed. So we can look at even this room I'm in right now has, has walls, right? It's, a, it's actually just a box. So when we look at this room, we say it was clearly designed, and it's a box. I want to challenge you. Look at your hand and tell me that your hand is not instantly more complex than this room. We as human beings are some of the most complex things on the planet. And many people will tell you today that, no, this room, it's, it's definitely complex. It was designed. But you, you just came from a process of evolution. I don't know if I have enough faith to believe that. It was Lee Strobel that once said, to continue in atheism, I would need to believe that nothing produces everything. Non-life produces life. That randomness produces fine-tuning, chaos produces information, unconsciousness produces consciousness, and non-reason produces reason. I simply don't have that much faith. And Strobel started off as an atheist, by the way. There are so many arguments for the existence of God. But there's a song that I really liked. It's a very obscure song, and it's just called The Evidence of God. And some of the lyrics of that song are, Every mountain, every valley, your creation, it surrounds me. Every breath I breathe, every heartbeat, every sunrise that you give to me. And it goes on and on and explains that everything we see around us every day points to God. And that goes into one of my favorite scripture passages. In Romans 1.20, Paul says, For since the creation of the world, people have seen the earth, the sky, through everything God has made. They can clearly see his eternal power, divine nature, and eternal glory. So they are without excuse for not knowing God. That comes off strongly. But I hope that through the series and through the evidence presented today, we can present to you good reasons to believe the hope that you have. And when you feel that God is distant, maybe you can fall back on these evidences and say, no, even when I don't feel God is there, I can know he's there. Now, there are maybe two ways to look at it. You can get to theism and then you can get to Christianity. And this is a good amount of evidence for theism. But as Timothy Keller said in The Reason for God, 
In the Christian view, the ultimate evidence for the existence of God is Jesus Christ. If there is a God, we characters in his play have the hope that he put some information about himself in the play. But Christians believe he did more than give us information. He wrote himself into the play as the main character in history when Jesus was born in a manger and rose from the dead. Friends, we have good evidence to believe that God exists, and we have good evidence to believe that Jesus rose from the dead, which we can get to another time. But I encourage you, if God feels distance, fall back on this evidence and remember that if he is, if he is real and he is there, he's always there to have a conversation with you. God bless.